What does great and fruitful mean? What does he mean when he says Quran I will make perfect? Is Quran perfect? Yeah. He's atheist. Say right? something Quranic. That's not the conversation we're having. Yeah, that's not the conversation we're having. They're not going to accept what you're saying. Never, ever. Well, They're I'm not writing ever. him off. I think he's a sincere man. I think he's a sincere man, and I think sincere people can anyone find the truth. Anyone reads Quran is insincere. No, that's not true. Do you know anyone? I know lots of Muslims Bring who are very sincere. Right, I'm looking at him. Right. I'm looking at him. Okay. They read one the Quran, question, and I think they're both question. sincere. So this is sincere. Yes? I think you have. I one think you're moment, too please. quick to judge one all moment, Muslims. Please, I'll prove it to you. You're going to prove to me that all Muslims. What is Ashad? What is Ashad? I'm not going to ask you. Why? Because I don't want to. I've told you already. I've told you they're liars, all of them, indiscriminately. No, they're not all liars. I've told you already. They're not all liars. You know Ashad? I've told you already. You did not answer my question when I told you where is the consciousness of a human being come from? Because this one doesn't belong to this What is You're not giving me an answer. What is Shahada? You're talking about something else. Tell me your Shahada. When I ask you, where is the consciousness of our human brain? Where does it come from? You did not give me an answer for it. So you can't give me an answer for it. Shahada, you ask what Shahada is, that is the law you can cast them out. At Shahada, when we say a witness, okay. there is only one God. Did you hear that? Yeah. Witness. And Musa is a messenger of God. Not Musa. I you didn't say believe Musa. in God Muhammad, and I'm following Musa. So I'm believing in God. Can I, for, us, I of Musa. for us, I'm not interested in what he's got to say. I don't he's believe. I'm not interested in what he's got to say. Stop engaging him. Let's either. just focus on our conversation. You can, you, can, you, can you explain to me what does it mean that he will make Ishmael a great nation? Does it mean great in numbers or does it mean great in virtue? He said oh, it says. It, it says. Multiply them. That's so it says that Ishmael will be made a great nation, yeah. and that is a blessing that they will have power. And we see that in the Old Testament, that the descendants of Ishmael become mighty kingdoms. It's there in the Old Testament. The prophecy is fulfilled in the Old Testament. The Ishmaelites do become a mighty nation, but mighty nations but come and go. And the Arabs are a great nation. They're very multiple these days. Yeah, but what great, you know? wait, I'm, I'm trying to understand what the word great means. Okay, does what, it only, mean, what does uh, it only mean numbers or does it mean virtue or does it mean... I'm talking in power. Does it power. power. And fruit for them. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't necessarily in, uh, believe in virtue. No. I believe in virtue, but I don't necessarily believe that that's part of the promise to Ishmael, that his descendants will be great in virtue. And I don't believe that Muhammad is a descendant of Ishmael. Why do you not believe Because there's no, there, no Muslim can prove that Ishmael is descended from, Muhammad is descended from, from Ishmael. From Kidar, Kidar tribe, I have seen direct connection. Yeah, it doesn't prove nothing. Kidar. There were not, would you agree that there were non-Arabs in the Arabian Peninsula in the 7th century? Yeah. Right. Would you agree that those non-Arabs are not descendant from Ishmael? Some. Right? Yeah, Thank you. So you don't know that Muhammad was an Arab by ethnicity. All you know is that he was someone who spoke Arab, but there were lots of non-Arabic ethnic people in the Arabian Peninsula that spoke Arabic. I think you can tell by someone's face. Though. Do you have a picture of Muhammad's face? He, he's been not a picture of Muhammad. He's, the people at the time knew. Do, 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 I they, don't have a picture, but they, they knew him in person. Yeah, they I said mean, he was I've a white man. I've been before, recently before in Hajj. Yeah. So you go around Kaaba seven times. Yeah. And then the main, most important thing is you go and you do Sai. Yeah. Now, if you believe that this Sai for Hajar, when she was suffering Which we don't. for water, yes, yeah. it was in Egypt or there, at least we do it. Same like when you uh, feel the suffering for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. We do this one so yeah. we can uh, uh, feel the suffer of Hajar when she was looking. Yeah. Uh, for water. Yeah. And I've done it. I went through. through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all air conditioned now. It's in an air conditioned tunnel. <laughs> You're really suffering in that air conditioned tunnel. Because yeah, that's saying. really what Hagar suffered air conditioning. <laughs> and then. Uh, it's a bit like a feasting during Ramadan. That's really what, that's really what we're, we're talking about. Now, my point to you is, bro, my point to you is that nothing that Muhammad claimed to belong to Islam actually belonged to Islam. Like well, the Hagar, for instance, Hagar, he didn't understand that the covenant was made with Abraham through Isaac. It said, right, in, uh, in chapter 17 and 18, it talks about it. Um, it says, now the Lord appeared to him by the oak of Mamre while he was sitting at the tent of the door at the heat of the day. And it goes on to say um, that 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 Isaac is the, the son. He says, when they said to him, where is your uh, Sarah, your wife? And he said, there in the tent, he said, 
I will surely return to you at this time next year. And behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. It's not about lack of knowledge. That's about believing in the text of the story. I'm, right. right. I'm going to bring you next time my Bible because I have mentioned there is yeah. before yeah. even Isaac born. God did there is no prophecy. That he will raise an offspring there from is, Abraham. Yeah, there is even no. Yes, Isaac. Born. Isaac. Isaac. The Isaac son is born. Isaac. Before Isaac, son born, Isaac. At a, a time lot. when Ishmael presented, mm. uh, God promised yes. Abraham and that the he will rise Yes, and the promise Christian. is Isaac. Can I ask you a question, Bob? Well, okay, what, let's what, say the promise. This is the second appearance. You're talking about an earlier appearance that happens in earlier chapters. I'm talking about the one where he actually says, who's going to have the son of the covenant? And he says very clearly in black and white, look, behold, it says down here, verse 9, they said to him, where is your, where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, uh, there in the tent he Absolutely. said I will surely return to you at this time next year and behold Sarah your wife will have a son and Sarah your wife uh, and then Sarah was listening and she laughed because she didn't believe this, what guarantees you that the Jews did not do with the Old Testament what the Christians did with the New Testament well firstly you can't prove that the Christians did anything with the New Testament no, we, you can no, just claim no, it no what I, what I mean is that they can I see it again just one second because we know that because there, there I don't remember. Lot, I'll hold my Bible. Sorry, no. There was a lot of text added, a lot of text. And we know that because Prove we it. have textual criticism. That's the whole reason right, we right, have right, textual right. criticism. No, no Bob. I know what you're yeah. saying, I mean. But what, what, what's your guarantee that the Jews did not add text, distort text, and do things such okay. similar so, things? So, firstly, let me correct you. Yeah. As someone who is familiar with the textual criticism that you're talking about, right? It isn't a lot of text. Just isn't. The vast majority, 99% of all the textual variants that scholars talk about are just spelling variants. That's 99% of all the textual variants. They're just spelling variants. 1% of textual variants are actually changes to the text. I've done some research. And I'm, I have as well, and I've been doing it a lot longer than you, Amir. Right? And, and the, textual, the textual variants that you're talking about, they're not, they're not that text have been taken out. Not out, not out. The textual out. variants are that there's a bit of extra text added in. Added in, yes. Yes. So that means that the problem that Christians face is not finding missing text. The problem that Christians face is to identify those texts that were added. And we already have. We know them, chapter and verse. And we identify them for you in our Bibles. Like, I'll do it for you now. Like the ending of Mark. Like the adultery pericope. Like 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Like, um, you know, the, the passage where it says that Christ had blood coming from his eyes in the Gospel of Luke when he prayed in the garden get sent me like the bit where Jesus said you know this kind of demon only comes out by fasting prayer and fasting we're able to identify those passages because when you compare the 5,000 Greek manuscripts to one another and the 10,000 Latin manuscripts and the 5,000 scripts that exist in other languages those texts that are added leap out at you I know. And so it's really easy to identify where the changes are. And here's what all the scholarship agrees upon. Not a single Christian doctrine is affected by any of them. 